Hello friends, Kerrigan Skelly with Pinpoint Evangelism and today I have a video for you on Islam. Uh, and What I'm going to attempt to do today is uh, refute Islam from the Quran itself. Uh, this will be an internal critique of Islam, presuppositional pro approach of it uh, to it and uh, I want to show you, I've used this myself in college campuses with uh, many Muslims, not necessarily quoting all the surahs for it, but I'll have that in this video by using this this form of thinking. So today, what I want to start out with first is gave you some facts from Islam about it and the Quran, uh, so you can know where I'm coming from. First, the Quran was compiled uh, between 646 and 650 A.D., which was about 550 years after the Book of Revelation was written, which is the last book written in the Christian canon. Uh, Muhammad actually died in 632 AD, which is 14 to 18 years before the Quran was compiled, finally compiled. The Quran was revealed to Muhammad by Gabriel in a series of revelations, and this is how Muhammad described uh, what he was like during these supposed revelations. He had seizures, he sweat profusely, he shivered, his mouth foamed, bells rang in his ears, and he rolled around on the ground while he was receiving these supposed revelations. And let me just stop right there for a second. Can you tell me of one other person in the Bible who's received revelations from God and has acted in such a way when they had a visitation from either God, who gave them the revelation directly, or from an angel? who gave him a revelation from God. I can't think of one, but this is how he uh, responded. And because he was uh, acting in such a way when he was receiving these supposed revelations from the angel Gabriel, he told his wife that he thought he might be demon-possessed and that others might think the same if they were to see or know how he was acting. Uh, Muhammad still received the message, though, and he wrote the message down even though he was illiterate. How is that possible? Uh, I guess that's a miracle in and of itself. Muhammad did not collect the writings together, however, and he died uh, kind of unexpectedly. You, you think if he was, if he knew he was going to die as a prophet, he probably would have compiled these writings together himself if they were really that important. If they really were God's words and they were completing uh, the Bible's revelation. So he died, and his followers uh, did a collecting instead. And the belief among Muslim followers. Um, Around is among Islam followers and Muslims is that every word in the Quran is true without error. Um, here's some some doctrines in the Quran that obviously Christians would disagree with. And the first surah I want to look at is Surah 4, 156 through 157. It says that they rejected faith, they uttered against Mary a grave false charge. But they said in boast, we killed Christ, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. But they did not kill him, nor crucified him, but so it was made to appear to them. And those who differ therein are full of doubts, with no certain knowledge, but only conjecture to follow. From a surety, they did not kill him. So this is saying that uh, the Muslims believe the Jews did not really kill Jesus. He was not truly crucified, uh, which is a very foundational doctrine of the Christian faith, because... According to Hebrews 9.22, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. We know from Old Testament prophecies that Christ would be crucified, and that the, the Gospels proclaim him crucified. Every single one of them proclaim him crucified, and the epistles proclaim him crucified. Uh, so that's obviously the Quran teaching here, in Surah 4, 156-157, is against what the Bible teaches. And then we have Surah 3 and verse 59. It says, the similitude of Jesus before Allah is as that of Adam. He created him from dust, then said to him, be, and he was. So when it comes to uh, Jesus, they believe, the Muslims believe he was a created being, created the same way Adam was from dust. Whereas the Bible says Jesus was eternal. Right, just look at John 1.1 1, 1 for that. Uh, then in the beginning was the Word, or was with God, and the Word was God in the beginning. And so, we believe Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Always has been, always will be. He was uh, the I Am before Abraham was. 
And so these are things that the Bible says about Jesus, but they say that he is a created being. And so this, this uh, goes against what the Bible says about the deity of Christ. And the last thing I want to look at, that there's a difference in between the Bible and the Quran, is Surah 4, 171. O people of the book, commit no excesses in your religion, nor say of Allah anything but the truth. Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, was no more than a messenger of Allah. And his word, which he bestowed on Mary, and a spirit proceeding from him. So believe in Allah and his messengers. Do not say, Trinity, desist. It will be better for you. For Allah is one God. Glory be to him. Far exalted is he, above having a son. To him belong all things in the heavens and on earth. And, and enough is Allah as a disposer of affairs. So according to Surah 4, 171, Jesus was not the Son of God, and the Trinity is not true. Desist from saying it would be better for you if you desist from saying Trinity, because the Trinity, according to the Quran, is not true. Now, according to the Bible, it is true. I'm not going to go through all the scriptures that um, talk about the Trinity. You can watch my video on the Trinity for that. Just type in the Biblical Doctrine of Trinity in my, on my, uh, my YouTube page in the search box, and you'll find it through that. Uh, but these are the three, I mean, there's lots of other things that, of course, Christians and Muslims would disagree on, but these are the three things I wanted to bring forth for this for this video. So, Jesus uh, was not crucified, according to Surah 4, 156 through 159. Uh, Jesus was created. He was not, he's not, hasn't always been. That's Surah 359. And Jesus isn't God, no Trinity, Surah 4, 171. Okay, so now let's... Let's dig into uh, what the what the Quran says about the Bible, okay, and and how it views the Bible, if it views the Bible as scripture or not. Let's just I got a bunch of surahs to look at here. So let's just start going through them. Surah chapter two, or Surah means chapter Surah two, and verse or ayah one thirty six. You say we believe in Allah and the revelation given to us. And he's telling them what, telling the Muslims what to say uh, to Jews or Christians. You say, we believe in Allah and the revelation given to us and to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes, and that given to Moses and Jesus, and that given to all prophets from their Lord. We make no difference between one and another of them, and we bow to Allah in Islam. So they believe that the revelation is given to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes, Moses and Jesus, uh, was given to them uh, by Allah. Surah 3, uh, verses 2 and 3. It says, Allah, there is no God but He, the living, the self-subsisting, eternal. It is He who sent down to you, step by step, in truth, the book, confirming what went before it. They sent down the law of Moses and the gospel of Jesus before this as a guide to mankind. They sent down the criterion of judgment between right and wrong. So the law of Moses and the gospel of Jesus were sent down to us from Allah according to the Quran. And then we have Surah 4 and 136, which says, O you who believe, believe in Allah and his messenger. And the scripture which he has sent to his messenger, and the scripture which he has sent to those before him. Any who denies Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers, in a day of judgment has gone far, far astray. So there was scripture sent uh, to us before Allah sent the scriptures to Muhammad. And it's books and messengers, according to Surah 4, 136. And then we have Surah 5, and uh, verse 46 through 48. And in their footsteps you sent Jesus, the son of Mary, confirming the law that had come before him. We sent him the gospel. Therein was guidance and light, and confirmation of the law that had come before him. A guidance and an admonition to those who fear Allah. Let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah has revealed therein. If any do fail to judge by the light of what Allah has revealed, they are no better than those who rebel. To you we send the scripture in truth, confirming the scripture that came before it. 
and guarding it in safety. So judge between them by what Allah has revealed. So the scripture supposedly given to Muhammad through uh, from Allah uh, is supposed to confirm the scripture that came before it and to guard it in safety. And we're supposed to judge between the Quran and what the Bible says. Okay? That's uh, Surah 5, 46 through 48. That's Surah 5, 68. Say, O people of the book, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand fast by the law, the gospel, and a revelation that has come to you from your Lord. It is a revelation that comes to you from your Lord. So the people of the book, um, Jews and Christians, are supposed to stand upon the law and the gospel. And that's a revelation that comes to us from our Lord, according to Surah 5.68. And then we have Surah 10 and verse 37, which says, This Quran is not such as can be produced by other than Allah. On the contrary, it is a confirmation of revelations that went before it, a, and a fuller explanation of the book wherein there is no doubt from the Lord of the worlds. So it's saying, no doubt, the Bible came uh, from Allah. And this is a, and the Quran is supposed to be a fuller explanation of that book. That's Surah 1037. Surah 10 and 94. If you are in doubt as to what we have revealed to you, then ask those who have been reading the book from the Lord. So be in no wise of those in doubt. Well, I would agree. If you are in doubt as to what the Quran says, ask Christians. We'll explain to you that the Quran is wrong and that the Bible is true and right. So that was Surah 1094. And then Surah 16 and verse 43. And before you also, the messengers we sent were but men to whom he granted inspiration. If you do not realize this, ask those who possess the message. So there were those who were before Muhammad who had inspiration and who had a message, their messengers. And if you have any any doubt, if you don't realize this, ask those who possess the message. That's Christians. So you can ask me if you'd like to. So that's Surah 16 and verse 43. And then Surah 29 and verse 46. And you do not dispute with the people of the book, except with means better than mere disputation. And let it be with those of, of them who inflict wrong and injury. But say, we believe in the revelation which has come down to us, and that which has come down to you. Our God Allah and your God Allah is one, and it is to him we bow in Islam. So, um, if you're a Muslim, according to Surah 2946, you're not supposed to argue with us unless we're being violent. And you're supposed to say that you believe in the same revelation that we have and that we're supposedly worshiping the same God. So these are some of the things that the Quran says about the Bible, um, and about the Quran itself, and how uh, the Quran is a fuller, supposedly a fuller explanation of the Bible, and that there should be no contradictions between the two, and that the Bible itself is a revelation given to people from God, and it should be trusted, and people, if you don't understand that, can go to people of the book and ask them these questions. So, we have this problem now, because the Quran says lots of good things about the Bible. But the Bible and the Quran say different things, at least about these three things I talked about earlier. One, um, that Jesus was created instead of uh, being, always being, always existing as a part of the Trinity. One, that, uh, two, that Jesus was not crucified. And three, that Jesus is not God and the Trinity is not true. So these three things, Jesus not crucified, he was a created being, he's not part of the Trinity, and there is no Trinity. These three things are different in the Quran than they are in the Bible. And so we have a problem. And to see that what it comes down to is God, Allah, the God of, of Islam, could not, if he is perfect and holy, he couldn't be... Um, the revelator of both the Quran and the Bible. This is contradictions. Unless, of course, the God of Islam is not perfect in intellect and perfect in knowledge, which the Muslims would say that's not true. And so, this is the problem the Muslims have. 
And so usually the way they deal with this is to say that the Bible has become corrupted. That's what they'll say. And, uh, you know, but they don't come to this, this understanding or this objection or this way to resolve the problem that the Bible has become corrupted because they have some kind of evidence. They come to it through circular reasoning. Because if the Quran is going to be true and uncorrupted and infallible and inerrant and true in every single word, and it really was revealed to Muhammad, the greatest prophet, the last prophet, by Allah, the perfect and holy God, then uh, the Bible must be corrupted. Because the Quran says these things and the Bible says these things. And so, but I would ask, I would ask any Muslim out there who's watching this video to please show me one manuscript of the Bible that says that Jesus was not crucified, that says that Jesus is not God or not deity in the flesh, or that he is a created being, that says the Trinity is wrong and that uh, Jesus isn't part of the Trinity or that Jesus is not the Son of God. I'd like to see one manuscript, just one manuscript that takes these facts out of the scriptures. Because the problem you're going to have, my friend, is that the manuscripts we have predate Islam, predate Muhammad, predate the collecting of the Quran into one book by uh, many centuries, uh, 300, 400, 500 years, okay, the manuscripts we have. And so, Unless you can show me a manuscript, unless you can show me evidence that shows manuscripts that show that Jesus was not the Son of God, that the Trinity is not true, Jesus is not God in the flesh, uh, Jesus was a created being, and Jesus was not crucified, I can't accept your refutation, supposedly, that the Bible is wrong and the Quran is true. And um, so that's the problem you're going to have. And not only are you going to have that problem, you're also going to have an even greater problem. Uh, for yourself, and that's these surahs I'm going to read right now. And the first surah I'm going to read is surah 6 and verse 34. And that says, Rejected were the messengers before you, with patience and constancy, they bore their rejection their wrongs until our aid reached them. There is none that can alter the words and decrees of Allah. Already you have received some account of those messengers. So, according to Surah 634, no one can alter the words and decrees of Allah. And we've already seen that the Quran declares the Bible to be the decrees of Allah. And so, if the reason why you say that the Bible has become corrupted is because the Quran can't become corrupted, then you must also say that the Bible cannot become corrupted. Now we have a contradiction still. Let's move on to Surah 6 and 115. Which says, The word of your Lord finds its fulfillment in truth and in justice. None can change his words, for he is the one who hears and knows all. Once again, you have the same problem with this Surah as you did with the last one. No one can change his words. And if, if the, the Bible could become corrupted, as you claim it is, my Muslim friend, then the Quran can also become corrupted. And so you must look into the history of the Quran and how it was compiled and why it was compiled and who compiled it and whether they were trustworthy and reliable and whether, uh, you know, at first there was lots of different versions of the Quran and then they gathered all of them together except for one and burned them and just wrote from one from there on out. Look at the history to see if you can trust the, the supposed writings of Allah that you, you claim to have now in the form of the Quran you have. And then we have Surah uh, 15 and verse 9. We have, without doubt, sent down the message, and we will assuredly guard it from corruption. And so if it's going to be guarded from corruption, if the Quran is going to be guarded from corruption, why didn't Allah guard the Bible from corruption? Then we have Surah 18 and verse 27. And recite and teach what has been revealed to you of the book of your Lord. None can change his words, and none will you find as a refuge other than him. So none can change Allah's words. That includes man. That includes early Christians. That includes the disciples. Um, none can change his word. 
And then we have Surah 85 and verse 21 and 22. Nay, this is a glorious Quran, inscribed in a tablet preserved. And that comes from their belief that the Quran was actually written down on a tablet in heaven before it came down uh, to earth through Gabriel to Muhammad and then finally was collected after Muhammad died by his followers. So just to summarize this, this argument against Islam using the Quran is that the Quran uh, was put together about 550 years after the writing of Revelation. Okay, that's the gap there. And the manuscripts we have date back to about 400 years before, 400, 500 years before the Quran was collected and written down. And of course it was collected and written down by, his, by Muhammad's followers, not Muhammad himself, because he died 14 to 18 years beforehand. Uh, when Muhammad was receiving the Quran, supposedly, the Revelation Quran from Gabriel, he had lots of weird experiences that he considered himself to be demon-possessed and thought others might think the same. He wrote the Quran down even though he was illiterate. The claim is that the, the Quran is perfect and without error in all its words. It teaches that Jesus was not crucified. Jesus was created. He is not God. He is not deity. He is not the Son of God. And there is no such thing as a trinity. But what we also have seen is that the, the Quran teaches that the Bible is Scripture, inspired by God, revealed uh, to human beings through people like Moses and Abraham and Isaac and Ishmael and Jesus and David. And we've seen those scriptures. But we've also seen scriptures that say that Allah's word can't change. Yet, be, the, even with all these facts, we've seen that the Bible and the Quran teach different things about Jesus. And there's many other things that teach us differently as well, but these are three main things. Because according to the Bible, if Jesus Christ didn't die for our sins on the cross, didn't shed his blood, um, and didn't rise from the grave on the third day, then we are most of all men pitiable. Okay? Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Without the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, you can't have your sins forgiven. No matter how holy you begin to live, when you realize you've, you've been a sinner, no matter how holy you begin to live, um, it, it's not going to forgive you of your past sins. Even if you decide as a Muslim to never sin again, you still need forgiveness of your past sins. And according to the Bible, there must be an atoning sacrifice. Jesus Christ is that shadow of the things that were um, done in the Old Testament. He was a shadow of things that were done then. He's the fulfillment of those, of those shadows. And so, when Christ came into the world as a son of God, born of a virgin Mary, with a perfect sinless life, and then died on the cross and then rose from the grave, he did it for the salvation of humankind. And if you're not going to trust in him as the way, the truth, and the life, and the only way to the Father, as the only name by which men can be saved, uh, no other name under heaven by which men can be saved, as the one who was uh, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we can be healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Unless you're going to trust in Christ, not just as a prophet, but as God, Son of God, and atoning sacrifice for sins, you can't have eternal life, according to the Bible. And so, my Muslim friends, I would uh, uh, encourage you to search out these things and look into these things and believe the truth, no matter what the cost is to you, uh, no matter what harm will come to you because of it, Christ shed his blood for you. He died from the cross, the Lord of glory. And uh, now he sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding for the saints. And one day he will return, as you believe. He will return. And he will stomp out the grapes of wrath, his enemies. And he will send those who have not trusted in him, those who have decided to continue to sin, and not trust in him for forgiveness of sins. He will send them to an everlasting hell forever. And so I would encourage you to, uh, to search these things out with an objective mind, and see how there's contradictions within your own religion that doing an internal critique of your own religion shows it to be wrong, shows it to be faulty, shows that the source of the Quran and the source of the religion Islam is not in a, in a perfect, omnipotent, omniscient, all-knowing, omnipresent God. It is not, that, that can't be the source of it because of the problems within it itself. There's contradictions in it. Now I assert to you the Bible doesn't have such contradictions. The Bible is God's holy word inerrant and infallible. 
And you'll see this through the manuscript evidence as well. Uh, so I would encourage you to uh, be reconciled to God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And do it today. Uh, I look forward to your questions, comments, and discussion over this. God bless.